Hey there, Internet. My name is Kevin Coons. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the Insta360 Evo, which is a 360 and a VR 180 camera. So first off, the Insta360 Evo is a brand new camera from Insta360. This camera shoots in VR 180 mode, which means you get 3D or stereoscopic video, and then you can fold it up and also make it 360 video. Now, this is not the first camera that can do that, but this is certainly one of the best ones in the market. I'm going to first take you through the history of VR180 and try and explain why it's popping now. So VR180 first came out about two years ago at VidCon. Both YouTube and Facebook were saying they're going to promote this new format. And the reason being is that you're using two lenses similar to 360, but it's half of the data that they normally have to deal with because you're dealing with only this 180 zone, this full peripheral zone, and you're not having to deal with the 360, which oftentimes if you're watching 360 video, the director or editor will rotate the image so that everything is spot on for you in this 180 zone. So they looked at the data, the eye tracking, and they found that almost no one was looking back there, and almost 0% uh, of the time are you looking in that direction. So they said, why don't we focus more on this VR 180, which also gives you the stereo effect, the effect of 3D, which you currently aren't getting in this monoscopic 360 video that I'm filming right now. So this, this is one of the first cameras that came about. It's from uh, a little company called Lenovo, and basically you can see the two lenses there enable you to see in 3D. Now this camera is great for the fact that it's a pocket-sized sort of thing, but the quality is kind of potato quality. Whenever you have a new camera come out for VR, I think it's a good thing for the industry because essentially it raises the tide of technology and all these other products then become much cheaper. So another camera that can actually switch between 360 and VR 180 is the Kandao Qcam. You can see here this camera currently 360 mode, then you flip it and it's in VR 180 mode. One thing I would say from the design side is they end up using three lenses instead of just two. I think it's very innovative that uh, Insta360's Evo is using too. Now, one of the nice things about this camera is that it had built-in stabilization, but the quality of the video could have been better in low light, and it wasn't 5.7K, it wasn't high res. Now, the nice thing about the Insta360 Evo is it takes the benefits of each of these different cameras and puts them together. Another VR180 camera that came out recently, Views XR. Uh, so this one's really cool, it does really good resolution, but it doesn't have amazing stabilization built in, sadly. So for me, I like this on a tripod. If I'm going to use this, I'm going to use it with a gimbal. But ultimately, I want something that I can just put in my pocket, take to a concert, shoot amazing stereo VR video. And so that camera is actually the Insta360 Evo, I believe. Um, I'm super curious to do comparison tests with all these different cameras in certain circumstances, like low light, test them uh, you know, on electric skateboards, things like that, where you can really see how well this camera will do in certain situations and the benefit of it. So VR180 right now is really popping because of, I think, three or four main reasons. The first one being it's less data for these big companies. Google, Facebook, all of them are having to stream this data to a mobile phone. And right now they want it to be easier and more functional for people who aren't just watching it in a VR headset, but people who are watching it on their mobile phones. Um, one cool factor with the Evo, if you buy it, you can get like a holographic case that you can put over your iPhone and then you see things in 3D without needing to wear a headset or 3D glasses. You see it with just your plain two eyes. Another interesting factor that I've seen with VR180 is that... Um, it's a lot easier for people who are apprehensive of 360 to lean into the medium a little bit more because they're more used to being able to sit behind the camera and direct actors and not, not be hidden away somewhere. So for them, they can still shoot in this 180 zone that they're initially used to doing. A third factor that I like to comment on is it still feels per full peripheral. So when you're in that zone, you really do feel like you're fully immersed. It doesn't feel like it's a cutoff sort of 360. It feels like you're in this whole world. I think the bigger factor beyond headsets though is if there's a way to take this VR180 format and make it more accessible to people who have 3D TVs or if you have a 3D laptop or a 3D iPhone in the future, um, I think that's going to be the way that people really access this media. Right now the VR180 format 
it kind of works with 3D TVs, but you really have to stand on one foot and pull out a clump of hair to make it work. So I'm trying to work with Adobe and a couple of other companies to try and really streamline this and make it a little bit more accessible for people because I think this is definitely the format that's going to pick up a lot more than 360. When you see your own photos, your own videos of your family and your friends in 3D, it's a lot more powerful and impactful than just seeing a regular 360 image. Overall, I'm excited about the Insta360 Evo. I'm excited to test it out. I'm excited to take it to different events. Coming up over the next month, I plan to cover the San Francisco International Film Festival, which is the oldest film festival in the Americas. I'm planning to film some filmmakers there, as well as actors and musicians. And I want to use a camera that's accessible, that can work in low light, but that I can approach someone with and not have to be on a tripod. That I can use handheld and maybe even not even have a gimbal. Although I will be testing gimbals with the company Moza at NAB this year. So definitely check me out there. Hopefully if I have the Insta360 Evo, I can have it on a gimbal and be talking about VR180 and be talking about the gimbal and combined stabilization. Other events that I'll be attending, I will be going to the YouTube Creator Lab in LA. So if you're in LA, definitely hit me up and we can talk about VR180 and 360 while I'm there. I'm going to be working with a homeless advocacy group called Invisible People hoping to make stories that will impact people and make people think a little bit different about homelessness. Another event that will be coming up next month that you can check me out at in San Francisco is at Adobe. I will be speaking at the Visual Effects Society Forum all about immersive media. I'll be on a great panel with amazing people. So I'll be linking to some of these events in the description below. I'm super excited for the Insta360 Evo. I really hope they send me one really soon because I really, really want to play with it and test it. Another factor I want to mention is Insta360 will be having their IPO come online in 2020. That's the rumor, at least right now. I'm super excited about this. I like seeing more camera companies on the stock market. I invest. I think that having camera companies on the stock market helps them get more revenue to make better cameras. So definitely something to keep online uh, if you invest in stocks. Anyway, there's a plane going over me now. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit the subscribe button. If you want to stay up to date on my latest 360 VR 180 videos, hit the notification button. Write a comment if you have any questions, uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks again. Peace.